Although Cairo has the Great Pyramids of Egypt, Luxor feels like the heart of ancient Egypt. Massive temples covered in colorful hieroglyphs burst forth from the desert landscape and eternal tombs of legendary pharaohs lay buried in the depths of the mountains. The east bank is home to Luxor Temple and the magnificent Karnak Temple with the most incredible colonnades known to man. The east bank is also home to the modern town of Luxor, creating a unique atmosphere of horse carriages, old cars, street markets, falafel stands, all with an ancient temple and the glittering Nile as a backdrop. I had a few days to explore the east bank of Luxor, and here's how it went. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Luxor, Egypt. Landed at like three in the morning this morning, and fortunately my hotel let me check in early, so I was able to get a little bit of sleep, but I'm gonna be pretty tired today. But I'm so happy to be back in Egypt. This is my third time coming here, and I love Luxor, so I wanted to come here and see the temples and show you guys some of like the really cool things here because I think Luxor is kind of the heart of a lot of the historic like ancient Egyptian stuff that you see. There's the East Bank and the West Bank which are kind of like two distinct parts and then you have the Nile running right between them so when you go to the West Bank you'll see like the Valley of the Kings and some of the other temples whereas on the East Bank here you have Karnak Temple and Luxor Temple right in the city center so you're just like walking around the town and you see these really cool temples so today i'm mostly going to focus on the east bank and tomorrow i'll probably go to the west bank luxor is just full of like all these like spice shops and fruit stands just along the road and I came in here and it just smells so good. Look at all these spices that they have. So one of my favorite things to do here in Luxor is just, there's all these street side cafes, old men drinking tea, smoking shisha, having coffee. So I'm just sitting here and I met Ahmed. Ahmed. And we're just having a coffee and just watching the life of Luxor go by. What should people know about Luxor? Luxor is small, it's the same Cairo. So just across the room, the tea shop here, there's this old guy that he makes shoes just across the way. So Ahmed took me over to him, introduced me to his shop. I just love these like back streets of Luxor here. I just love how crazy the streets of Egypt are. Like there's just horse carriages, motorcycles, cars, mini buses, just all trying to like battle for the road. Uh, and it's just crazy and chaotic and it's overwhelming, but kind of fun to watch. <laughs> okay, thank you. You know what sounds good actually is like, Roman. Maybe like a Schweppes pomegranate or something. Yeah. Okay. Can you do five pound? Yeah. Uh, six pound. Six pound. Okay. Six Sounds good. Pound. Thank you. You have to barter for everything in Egypt, like even the soda. It's so exhausting, but it's so fun. Anyways, I'm walking to the center of Luxor here, and it's just so beautiful. Luxor Temple is right in the center of town, and then off in the distance you can see the Valley of the Kings, you can see the mountains off in the distance, and it is just so beautiful. I love downtown Luxor. Right around Luxor Temple, which is right in the heart of the town of Luxor, you can kind of walk around the outside of the gate here and you can see most of the temple. It costs about 10 or $12 to enter. And in my opinion, you're gonna see so many temples in Luxor that if you wanna save 
on not going to all of them and save a little bit of money. You don't have to see Luxor because you see so much of Luxor Temple just from outside the wall here. Anyways, on this side of Luxor Temple, you have the Nile right here, so you can look off and see the Valley of the Kings where a lot of the pharaohs are buried. You have all these boats along the Nile. It's really pretty, and then you just have the temples right here. So you have the temples and then the Nile, and it's just a really cool temple to walk around here. All along the Nile here, you have this nice little paved corniche. There's nice places to sit. You're kind of elevated above the Nile, and it's just a really fun place to watch the boats go by. There's a bunch of ferries going from East Bank to West Bank. It's just such a historical river, and it's just so amazing to be here and just thinking of all the life that has happened here throughout thousands of years. Alright guys, so I was just here enjoying the view of the Nile and my friend Bassam invited me to go on his boat for some tea on the Nile. So why, why would I say no to tea on the Nile? Because our gods, our gods have 99 names. Allah, God the merciful, you know, yeah. the mercy. All that names, our gods have 99 names. Okay. This is an Arabic one, and this is an Arabic eight. It's one, eight in Arabic. Okay. 19, so 99. 90, 99. Thank you for the tea, guys. Thanks for letting me sit on the boat. All right, that was actually nice. I was afraid it was gonna be a like 15 minute pitch on why I should take a fluker ride, but they honestly just wanted to share tea with me and they wouldn't even take my money for it. Well, I was gonna walk around and head back to town to grab lunch, but just looking at the time after grabbing tea with everybody, I think I'm actually gonna jump on a horse ride just for fun and head to Karnak Temple first. It's only, he's charging me only like a dollar for a two or three kilometer horse ride all the way to Karnak. So, and Karnak is one of my favorite temples, so I really wanna have lots of time to explore that. taking the horse right along the Nile here. You can look across and see the Valley of the Kings. You can see Hatshepsut Temple. Thank you. So I've just taken the horse ride to Karnak Temple and I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite temples in all of Egypt. It's just these massive pillars. It's just such a big temple to explore and it just seeing the hieroglyphs up close, it's just amazing. So hopefully I have like a couple hours to just really slowly explore. You start in this visitor center and there's like a little museum that has a model of Karnak Temple for just thousands of years. It's where all the palaces were in Upper Egypt. And then you walk outside and you're just met with this wall that's the entrance to the temple. I'm very excited to show you guys this. This is like one of my favorite places in Egypt. After the main kind of gate there, you're in this great forecourt, which was one of the latest things added to the temple in about 1300 BC. And there's a couple like little side chapels here that are a little bit quieter. And then there's this huge like row of sphinxes. 
and then there's these magnificent pillars that take you right into the heart of Karnak Temple. I'm just taking it slow this time and just really enjoying every little crack and corner of this temple because it's just, it's so big. It's probably like half a mile to walk from one side to the other and across, so it's huge. This row of sphinxes here, there's just like probably about 50 of them and they all have this little like mummy under their chin and then there's these huge pillars just behind them. To the right side of the forecourt here you have the Temple of Ramses and you enter and there's all these mummies with their arms crossed as you're walking through and then there's this like darker arched area and you can just see some of the colors and the inscriptions on the ceiling. It's just amazing to see it. It looks so fresh here in this kind of more covered area that hasn't been touched by the sun. You can see like white and blue paint still on some of the hieroglyphs. My favorite part of Karnak Temple is entering the Great Hippo Style Hall. There's like about a hundred of these huge pillars. So I'm gonna walk in there now and show you what it's like to walk through this gate. This place is amazing and it's like one of my all-time favorite places to explore, especially here in Egypt. There's 134 of these giant columns that are about 75 feet high. They're about 15 feet in circumference. And they're just these massive pillars and they're just covered in huge hieroglyphs. Some of them just have such vibrant colors left to them still. And you can just walk around and you're just looking up and there's these arches above that even have hieroglyphs underneath them. That makes you feel so small walking around these giant pillars that are about 4,000 years old. I just love walking around and looking up and imagining all of these stories and imagining all the people that carved into these huge columns, the people that painted the ceilings. I just, I love Karnak Temple, this is so cool. This is my third time here and I'm still just as amazed as any of the other times I've honestly just spent an hour just walking around, sitting, looking, admiring, and it's just still blows my mind how they built this, why they built this, how it's still here. So many questions, but anyways, I think I should move on from the Hippo Style Hall and check out the rest of the temple complex here. <laughs> All right, so right as you leave the Hippo Style Hall, you're greeted by these two massive 28 meter high obelisks that have hieroglyphs just all up and down them. And there's this little narrow area that leads you from one kind of temple hall to another hall. And yeah, you just have these little like nooks and crannies that you can kind of explore on your way to the next hall. All the way on the other side of the courtyard here, there's one last temple all the way to the east of the complex. So I'm gonna go check that out. All right, so all the way on the eastern side of the Karnak temple complex, you have the Ak Menu temple, which is definitely a lot less impressive than the Hippo style hall. These columns are only about 
30 feet tall, but you get some beautiful colors in them and the crowd definitely thins out a little bit. So you have this temple a little bit all to yourself. And one of my favorite parts about exploring these temples is just seeing the colors on some of the hieroglyphs and just thinking that that paint has been there for thousands of years. So just to the south of the Hippo Style Hall, you have these huge like main gates. There's like three or four of them. And it looks like at one time, you know, they were just these massive walls. And then one of them has this huge statues of Ramses sitting. And then here you can see like the feet of some larger statues that were also there. So you can just imagine this like grand entrance into this city and temple complex area. just leaving Karnak Temple now and I spent about three hours there and I like still want more time just to walk around and sit and think and I just love this place so so much. There's hieroglyphs on every single piece in there, every wall, every rock. There's so much to see. It's really big. There's lots of people. I tried to avoid most of them in my shop but it's a very touristy place so you will have crowds. There's like huge tour groups but absolutely amazing place so I have about 20 minutes till sunset I just want to walk back in the light there's this really long avenue of the sphinxes it's about two miles long that connects Karnak temple to Luxor temple which is in the heart of the town so I'm gonna see if it's still possible to walk along the avenue of the sphinxes back to Luxor All right, unfortunately I couldn't find a way to access the Avenue of the Sphinx, but I found this bridge. And so you can see uh, Karnak Temple is all the way over there, and then it's this ancient road that was lined with like hundreds if not thousands of Sphinxes a long time ago, and it leads all the way into town into Luxor Temple. Anyways, I still have about a mile and a half to go back to Luxor, and it's starting to get dark, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good afternoon guys, I'm back on the east bank of Luxor. Yesterday I went across the river, went to the west bank, checked out some of the temples there, and then this morning I did a hot air balloon ride, which will be in a separate video uh, from the east bank. And today I just there's a couple more things I want to show you on the east bank here. Uh, there's the tourist market, there's the falafel shop I really love, and then tonight I'm going on a sunset felucca ride on the Nile River, which will be beautiful. But first I want to show you there's a coffee shop right in the center of Luxor town here where you can get a coffee and then you can go up two or three flights of stairs and it has this beautiful view looking down on Luxor Temple. So one of my favorite things about Luxor is the street food. There's this one falafel guy that I found like five years ago and he makes these awesome falafel sandwiches with fresh falafel, potatoes, eggplant, a salad, and it's like this little pocket sandwich and they're about 30 to 40 cents each. So I just like load up on these sandwiches for lunch and dinner and it's so delicious. So, and it's, his little shop is just right across the street from the temples here in the center of Luxor. Right near the roundabout in the middle of Luxor, there's this tourist market and it can be really annoying to go there because everyone's just trying to sell you stuff and they're very persistent and they'll like shake your hand and then they'll just like grab your hand and pull you into their shop and it's it's a bit of a overwhelming experience but it is a really cool market street to just walk down there's lots of cool crafts they're selling t-shirts there's all these like sculptures and jewelry so there is a lot of really cool Egyptian souvenirs so if you are looking for souvenirs it's a good place to go but you definitely have to make sure that you're bartering for your price 
because they'll usually start the pricing about probably two or three times what the actual price should be. So let's go walk through the market here and check it out. Scarf you can use it as a covering for a pet. Ah, you like to have it? <laughs> no, I don't need it. What if I want something that's all the way at the bottom of this pile? Outside, anywhere I can do it. In okay. a minute. Okay. You want to try? Try. You like something nice old pieces? I do like it, but statues. Yeah, there's nice. I got nice. very beautiful small shapti. Okay. You know shapti? This is Hatshepsut. Yeah. Hatshepsut. Shapti. And this Aladdin lamp. It's very old. Look at the design. H how old? Um, how old is it? No one can judge exactly, <laughs> but it okay. is very old. Nice. All this very old stuff. Yeah. But in Karnak temples, a special room for this lady. That shop was amazing. It was just like jam-packed with all these antiques and so many of the shops around here seem super touristy and all that. But that was just a really fun experience going upstairs, seeing the rug room and yeah, I even bought a couple like small rugs there. So, and the guy was like super nice, obviously trying to sell me a lot of stuff, but just really enjoyed seeing all of those ancient like Egyptian antiques and stuff in there so really cool so anyways gonna keep walking down this market area there's a lot to see here. market is really chaotic you have to have tough skin to just walk through there and again everyone's gonna try to pull you into their store and sell you things but I just love it anyways because there's just so many cool things to see like the the touristy trinkets and stuff are just like so cool here in Egypt I, I love like all the old rings and all the statues but yeah it's, a, it's an experience for sure but anyways I have to run back to the hostel and meet up with some people because we're going to go on a sunset boat ride this evening on the Nile. So I'm very excited about that. So we've just met up with the group from the hostel and we're walking down to the riverbank to catch our felucca. Alright guys, we've just made it down to the docks of the Nile here on the East Bank and we're 
about to take off and embark on our sunset sailing cruise. So let's uh, hit the Nile. Guys, so we've just been tugged up river for about 20 minutes and we're here at Banana Island and we're gonna see some monkeys and maybe a crocodile so let's check it out. Makes me want a pet monkey, he's so cute. Now we get to try some fresh bananas straight from the banana trees, so let's check it out. Alright guys, we've just come back to the boat here and we're going to sail back to Luxor and watch the sunset as we sail, so let's go. beautiful being out here on such a historic river, the Nile. As the sun is setting, we're just rowing back to Luxor now. And that's about it for the East Bank. So tomorrow morning I catch a flight to Cairo. So I'll see you guys in Cairo, Egypt. But yeah, thanks for joining me on the East Bank of Luxor and we'll see you next time.